Good afternoon, everybody. It's Jared here with Day Traders FX. I hope you guys are having a great Tuesday. Hope you had a good weekend. I didn't put out a daily video uh, on Monday because I was out of town for the weekend and just couldn't quite get back in time. Uh, but anyways, it's Tuesday. We've got lots of stuff to look at. Uh, let's just start off real quick here. Remember that you can get a free trial to our live trading group. We meet twice a day, pretty much every day of the week. So we're on quite a bit. If you go to daytradersfx.com, you can see that uh, on the website in the upper right hand corner, you can get a free five day trial. There's just a little two minute video that gives you an intro to the website and all the details. It's kind of weird looking at a video of a video Okay, anyways, that's that's a mind uh, mind boggler. Uh, but anyways, have a look at the website. Join us for a week of trading on me. Uh, let's have a look at what the U.S. markets have done. Uh, U.S. markets have been pretty crazy, actually. They started up uh, a little bit in the positive today, a decent amount of the positive, and you can see everything closed pretty negative. Uh, down, S&P down. Uh, S&P down almost uh, almost 10 points, so about a half a percent. Dow's down about a half percent. So a bit of a of a risk off kind of a day. Um, We'll see what happens, you know, coming up here. Um, as far as news announcement goes, we had uh, trade balance come out today, which was, uh, whoops, wrong wrong country there, uh, for the U.S. and Canada. But I was uh, going to refer to the U.S. because it came out a bit, uh, a bit better than expected. And we saw a bit of a movement from that, and things kind of just went sideways. And it's been a pretty choppy, pretty consolidated morning. Uh, we have GDP for Australia coming out this afternoon. Keep an eye on that. That's going to be a biggie. Uh, coming into tomorrow, which is Wednesday... We've got the ADP report, number one. Uh, that'll be a that'll be a decent mover for the U.S. Keep an eye on that. Uh, and the ISM, so two big U.S. announcements. Um, and then we have uh, the PMI report from uh, the U.K. So so we'll keep an eye on some of the pound dollar stuff. And then Canada has got uh, uh, their uh, housing starts, building permits uh, announcement. And then we have trade balance out of Australia. So you can see that we've got some pretty good announcements coming up. And then remember, later on this week we do have the uh, interest rate announcements for the UK and Europe and we have non-farm payroll uh, or employment numbers for the US and Canada so it's a pretty big week oftentimes when we have that much big news markets will just kinda go sideways until the news comes out so we might see a little bit of that happening okay uh, euro dollar you can see uh, the euro dollar started the week off crazy strong and then we just had these two big movers up here 150 pips worth uh, crazy movement and then the euro has kind of topped out at about 130-100 and it seems like it doesn't want to move higher but it doesn't want to move lower than about 130-50 and it doesn't want to move higher than 130-100 we're kind of in this 50 pip channel so a couple of interesting things to look at um, if the euro dollar does not go any higher if it doesn't break this high which so far it has not um, then I'm just kind of going out on a limb. I don't know if this will have anything to do with anything, but it might. Uh, the fact that we have a Fibonacci, uh, possible Fibonacci range, that I'm just keeping my eyes on. Again, I don't know. I don't know. This may not play out, but you can see that the 23% Fib overlaps the daily pivot point today, and we're having a heck of a time breaking higher. So it makes this pair a little bit interesting, A, to trade against the high, which currently the high is about 131.07, I believe. Um, uh, yeah, about 131.07. Looking for opportunities to short against the high, number one, as close as possible with tight stops so that if we're wrong, we can find out sooner than later. Um, or shorting the break of about 130.40, uh, looking for a target of about 130, 130 slash 13005. Uh, again, if this range plays out like I think it could and like it might, then 130 should be our next target uh, in the very near future for the euro dollar. Otherwise, if we break above 13100, then we're headed kind of into the regulars. You know, we have some highs back here. 13200 is really the only next level. 13150 seems to get hit a lot, but um, but but 13200 is kind of our next big target. So that's that's basically what I'm looking for on the euro dollar. You can see on this big run here, we've bounced off the 50% fib, and we're just right at the 38, and it's kind of just bouncing around. So again, above 13100, probably 13200 will be our next reasonable stop. Uh, stopping point, profit target, I guess. Uh, but if we stay below this, I'm looking for 130 at least to get tested, which is our 38% fib, and I'm right in the middle of all this consolidation garbage. Remember, it's pretty common for the start of the week to make a high or low and run off of that. And the start of the week made a high, so I won't be too surprised to see a low uh, uh, happen, you know, uh, for the rest of this week or for the next couple of days. So that's what I'm looking at on the euro dollar. 
the pound dollar is kind of doing something a little bit similar as well where we had this strong run up for the week the market opened didn't really hardly pull back at all and ran up uh, about 170 pips from the open uh, and then it's just consolidated as well now the pound dollar is topped out here at about 153.75 which is interesting uh, it's been really choppy and consolidated looks like it really kind of doesn't want to make much of a break of about this 152 uh, 80 area. It's it's made some attempts at it and it just it's just kind of not going. Um, so if we do break 150.80 though, if we do break that, I still think this is a good area to short the, the, the pound dollar because we've got a missed weekly pivot down here which is a great target um, and we've got uh, on this bigger range, once again I'm going on a little bit of a limb here, but on this bigger range we've already opened below the 23% fib. Now this this range may or may not play out, I'm putting this disclaimer in here because I'm usually, usually looking for shorter term ranges that have no retracement, just really short term ranges, straight up straight down kind of stuff and this is a little bit of a longer term range, it's not, I mean it's only a couple of days but it's you know 360-70 pips. Uh, we've got some pullback in there a little bit but but again we're starting to cross this 23 percent fib and whenever that happens usually that leads to a crossing uh, or excuse me a reaching of the 38 percent and in this case the 38 percent fib right now is 153 30 about 30 excuse me 152 152 uh, 35 so uh, so from from the 23 percent fib that's about a 50 to 55 pip run uh, and as long again as we stay below this high I think we've got a pretty good chance of reaching that um, pound dollar you know has has run pretty good and it's uh, um, from from this this run right here we had a nice little double bottom we ran from the highs uh, down to a pretty perfect double bottom and you can see that this has uh, I've got so many levels on here I can't keep track you can see that um, that th this is just tested the 61.8 uh, of this pre-summer run so it's retraced all the way back to the 61.8 and now it's coming off of that and running out of steam just a little bit which is why once again I'm looking for the cross of that 23 which is around 152.80 uh, and a move into that 38 which is around 152.35 so that's kind of what I'm looking for trading against this high shorting the pound dollar for the moment um, Aussie dollar is something definitely interesting to take a look at the Aussie has given us uh, a pretty interesting move from this big high the, the high of May excuse me April high of April which was around 105.80 it dropped just about a thousand fifty pips uh, so that's fantastic I'd like to say that I was short from 105.80 but I was not um, and and it made this really nice big run down and some great pips now what happened is it bottomed out and we've run up to the 23 percent fib now once again I may sound like a broken record with all these fib levels but I'm telling you that 23 to 38 plays out over and over and over again so as it bottoms out here um, and and has run up now to the monthly pivot slash 23% fib uh, and just pushed just above that that now is enough for me to start looking to buy the Aussie dollar against this low and the low is about one or excuse me 95 what is this low 95 about 25 uh, and you can see that current market price uh, is sitting around 96.46 give or take uh, so I'm looking at, at opportunities to hopefully buy against this this little low period here you can see that we've come down and tested the the weekly pivot point uh, we have a nice little pin bar right here uh, making a new low with a positive candle nice little pin bar and that might be a good starting point to start uh, uh, buying against so what I'm looking for is a potential opportunity to buy against this low right now the low is about 9600 um, and as long as we can stay you know above that 9600 area uh, I think we're good for a little bit of a run up so let's start looking for a little bit of pullback we're, we're currently at about again 9646 let's look for entries around 9625 9630 so between 15 and 20 pips below current market price and get your stops below 9600 and let's see if we can catch this thing on the move up if we get stopped out we're gonna look to get in once again uh, a bit lower against this low so I'm, I'm just looking to trade the, the, the pullback on the Aussie dollar, uh, and I think we'll get a pretty good one. Last but not least, Aussie Yen. This is a good-looking little setup here. Uh, it's been bumping around, moving around quite a bit. My charts are kind of crazy looking, but you can see this nice big hammer right here. Uh, that tells me that this low is going to be a pretty good one. I always love Friday highs and Friday lows, and this happens to be our Friday low at about 
96, about 96.05, 96.06. A break below this, so basically an entry of maybe 9600 even, would be a good sell opportunity in my mind. Uh, and likewise, a dip down a little bit closer to this level should be a good area to, to, to get long against this support uh, and look at you know trading into the weekly highs and daily highs and so on. So keep an eye on that. Okay, that was a lot to say, but we have some great levels and some great setups, and I tried to get through it as quick as I could. Have a wonderful day. Make sure to follow me on Twitter at DayTradersFX. Take care, everyone.